Hello, YouTube. Let me introduce you to remarkable information about a very mysterious continent from a remarkable Russian scientist I have mentioned for years, Valentin Psalomshikov. He passed away in 2021, and he was virtually unknown outside of the USSR and later the Russian Federation. But that's too bad, and I'm trying to change this. In 1977, Soviet scientists, among them Psalomshikov, conducted experimental research in the ice pool of the Arctic and Antarctic Research Institute. But one day the pool was closed. You see, an expedition arrived from Antarctica and unloaded ice cores into it, obtained by drilling a kilometer-long layer of ice over one of the subglacial Antarctic lakes. This staff of the Institute came running to look at them, and the particular curious even tried to lick the ice. Psalomshikov decided to cool their enthusiasm and suggested that pathogens from thousands of years ago might have been preserved in this ice. Someone from the authorities heeded this warning and specialists from the Leningrad State University biofactory were called in. Psalomshikov talked to one of them when they were taking samples for analysis, and a few days later he told the scientist that short golden wires were found in one of the samples. It was in this form that this sensation got into the Soviet media at the time. The biologist announced that the research results would be published and promised to send him the article, but Psalomshikov did not receive it and gradually forgot about the story. Since everything was quiet, it meant that nothing pathogenic was found in that ice. And so, in 2007, from the newly published book by A. Wojciechowski, titled Secrets of the Underworld, Psalomshikov learned some details of the research conducted. Here's what it said. In 1977, Leningrad scientists found wood chips in ice samples obtained during drilling of a glacier in Antarctica. Several metal hairs, two centimeters long and as thick as a human hair, were also found there. Surprisingly, all the hairs found in different samples were of the same length, had smooth ends, and had almost no elasticity. When trying to squeeze them with tweezers, dents appeared in them. They did not dissolve in hydrochloric, sulfuric, nitric, and acetic acids. Therefore, they were golden. More than 10 years later, Norwegian scientists made other extraordinary finds in the thickness of the Antarctic ice. Gold jewelry, gold fishes, striking with their bizarre shapes and rare beauty finishes, gold masks and some tools. Well, Psalomshikov noted that this last um, message is entirely on the author's conscience. He, Psalomshikov, has not come across any such news in serious publications or literature. Let me remind you, continue the book's author, uh, that all these strange finds were made completely by accident and during geophysical research, fossilized remains of tropical plants were also discovered, indicating that many millennia ago this continent was ice-free. And although industrial exploration of minerals in Antarctica is prohibited, by international agreements, information appears in the media that coal and oil have been discovered there. As you can see, concluded Solomshikov, even at the threshold of the third millennium, the ice continent only slightly reveals its secrets. But he, more, he wrote a little bit more about, Antar about Antarctica, so let's look at the other angle. 
this story began in the summer of 1977 in the freezer of the Scientific Research Institute of the Arctic and Antarctic in Leningrad at that time. The institute was located in an ancient palace at the time on the Fantanka embankment. They, the staff of the Hydrometeorological Institute, worked there on a joint topic. The freezer was not empty. It contained samples of deep sea ice taken during deep drilling of the Antarctic glacier. On that memorable day, a discussion unfolded on the age of the fossil ice. One of the experts claimed that the age of the ice was 20,000 years. Uh, another called the figure 13,000 because it was then that a global catastrophe occurred on Earth that engulfed Atlantis and the great glaciations began. But the opponent stood his ground, relying on scientific data 20,000 years ago. No, 20,000 years old was the wooden ship that was found in one of the pieces of ice and determined its age by radiocarbon method. The Atlantis enthusiast, however, did not give up. There used to be no ice in Antarctica. Some kind of baobab tree grew there, which was 7,000 years old. Then glaciation began, and piece of it fell into the ice. That's what turned out to be 20,000 years. The conversation led Psalomchikov to a good idea, to look for um, any more inclusions in this fossil ice, but a cursory examination of how many samples failed to, for, uh, find, failed to find anything. At that moment, another tour, so to say, came to the camera to look at the ice thousands of years old, and some young tourists even wanted to lick the sample with his tongue. Solomchikov advised against it, hinting that microorganisms from thousands of years ago, including pathogens of unknown diseases, could remain in the ice. By the way, the management of the institute ignored such a danger, uh, so Solomchikov wanted to take the initiative himself to conduct at least the simplest studies by selectively viewing samples under a microscope. He managed to interest, to get the interest of a female microbiologist, a PhD, who was going to write a doctoral dissertation um, in this problem or this issue. The discovery of fossil microbes in samples of ancient ice could give her a very advantageous chapter in the text of her dissertation. Among the samples selected for the study, they were most interested in one, some filamentous, um, from the word filament, inclusions were visible in it. By that time, of course, the ice had melted and several hairs about two centimeters long and as thick as a human hair appeared in the field of view of the microscope. At a hundredfold magnification, they appeared as pieces of metal wire of a golden hue with almost no elasticity. All the hairs were the same length and had smooth ends as if they had been carefully cut. When strongly squeezed with steel tweezers, dents appeared on the hairs as on soft metal. Then they performed the chemical analysis of the hairs using a set of acids, hydro fluoric, sulfuric, nitric, and acetic. The golden hair withstood this test, and they had no doubt it was golden. Several years have passed, and the Commission on Anomalous Phenomena, under the State uh, Committee for Hydrometeorology, has begun to work actively. I described this in my books. It was an interesting entity. Um, under the Soviet times that actually scientists were studying paranormal. It's, you read my books, you'll find out more about it. At one of the, its meetings, Psalomchikov told about his discovery. The chairman of the committee, academician Fyodorov, by the way, member of the famous Papanian expedition, became interested in the find and handed it over to his friend who headed the Institute of 
crystallography of the USSR Academy of Sciences. The Institute conducted her analysis and recognized their material for an alloy of gold and silver. In 1984, a news item flashed in the Soviet media that American researchers had also found thin golden hairs in the Antarctic ice. If you believe the media in general, wrote Psalomshikov, this is not such a sensation, or rather not the first one. Back in June of uh, 1844, the English newspaper The Times published an article about a gold thread found in the thickness of a stone raised from the depth of 2.5 meters in Berkshire. Half a century later, gold wire was discovered in Australian limestone and in 1957 in Africa in a piece of granite. Accordingly, the age of these finds was already estimated not in thousands, but in millions of years. By the way, stranger things he added were found also in stones, from nails to gold chains and vessels made of metal and complex composition, which again got gathered tens of millions of years ago. And, of course, I um, have some of this information in my videos, too. Um, so, there you have it. I have more materials from various Palomshikov's publications, uh, but no more about Antarctica. Someone, somewhere, has the archives of this remarkable Russian scientist and journalist, I hope they did not get tossed away into trash. That happens too. So expect more. And if you like my research, you can support me through the links you'll find in the description to this uh, video. Please like my videos. Please subscribe to my channel. Please tell others. Thank you for your support.